Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to the best out of three semi-final on the top side of the bracket for the GEST Dota 2 March Ten edition. I or Actually, I think it's February edition. We're just running a little bit behind schedule here as far as the Five months go, but we'll get caught up over the course of the year. I'm LD. I'm joined here today by Bruno. Yeah. Uh, I, of course, am uh, Beyond the Summit, Bruno from the GD Studio. So thank you all for being here today, and we're going to cast... Uh, some good old-fashioned Southeast Asian Dota. Bruno just enjoyed some Starship Troopers. Of course, very relevant because if there's a bug in this game, they'll be killing him. But there's not because they banned the Nyx. There's still a Broodmother to worry about. But anyway, Bruno, it's Neolution Indonesia versus Orange. I don't know much about Neolution Indonesia. I assume you probably don't either. So we have to assume Orange are going to be the heavy favorites. But I said that last game, and the Rising Stars almost took them down with a ridiculous global face rush lineup. Wasn't quite enough in the in the end, but it was pretty scary while it was going. Ten well, I mean, we'll have to see right now. Um, I guess when you go as an underdog Five against such a favorite team, remaining. because I mean, we could pretty much say that Orange is currently the best team in Southeast Asia. When you're going like that, maybe it's time to try some crazy stuff, do something different. I mean, they definitely know how to fight against the standard lineups that you see every day. Maybe if you just get a single peak or a single strategy that gets them out of their comfort zone, you can get an upset. Uh, it didn't work for Rising Stars, but almost. Let's see how Neolution Indonesia can do with this. Yeah, I was going to start with the Mag Shadow Demon. After the Rubik first pick from Orange, and if there's one thing that Orange has been pretty consistent at, it's extinct stealing pretty much whatever he wants on the Rubik. Uh, if they go for the Sand King, then it's generally Net who plays Ten the Rubik, seconds. but both of these players are really impressive with their rubik play so i gotta say it's a rather Five confident pick to go for something like mag rp one of the easier ults in the game to steal uh just it's because so the it's got a relatively small aoe so it's not like ravage where you can almost count on always hitting the rubik and uh, especially with orange they give their supports a lot of farm priority in the mid game lashrak yeah. and chen the follow-up choices here so we're either looking at a solo mid rubik or we're looking or at a farming lashrak which is it going to be Mm, I think that the age of farming the Shrug is over you, since... See, you say that, but Orange has really been favoring these five-man push strategies in the mid-game as of late, so I would it, it's not out of the question that Ohio could take the Lashrak mid. I mean, it still works, but it was so the much power, much more back. powerful when uh, the Evoli Kirik didn't have a cast animation. Radio yeah, that's very true. That was really, really strong. After that, I mean, yeah, some teams keep picking it, but it's not the strong pick it used to be. Pretty much before, when you went to contest a rune against the Shrug, you couldn't. You just couldn't. Either you blink to the rune or something like that, but if you had to walk side by side, you would melt towards the Diabolic Hitic. Now, it takes a full second for the Diabolic Hitic to cast. In that second, you're just away from the range and just get the rune. Uh, but we're getting Luna. Luna, Shadow Demon, Magnus. Um, pretty strong five, man. Pretty strong five, man. Uh, the Shadow Demon duplicating the Luna will make all those glaives fly left and right, which is really, really fun. Especially against uh, a hero like Chen. <laughs> yeah, I mean, my concern right now is that if they decide to push at level two, which they totally can with the Shrek and Chen, there's nothing you can do with these heroes. And also, Orange have a very strong roam as well. If they want to dual roam with a sort of, you know, a la LGD with the Rubik Chen, they can do that as well. And I think that's another argument in favor of putting the Lashrak as a farmer, is that the threat of the Rubik Chen roaming is a lot scarier than if Ch Lashrak is the support. So I'd say it's almost certain, really, that it's going to be a farming Lashrak. Plus, Ohio's done it before. This would not be the first time. And then the question is, what will Mushi play? Because the Luna was taken. That's sort of his go-to carry. Obviously, uh, we haven't seen him play sort of the Queen of Pain, that type of hero much. Yeah, it is banned out anyway. Lone Druid continues to get banned, so respect towards KYXY, but he's had a pretty versatile hero pool. Darkseer, Enigma, Lone Druid, Bounty Hunter. I mean, this guy has really been playing it all, and I think for me, uh, he's the one who's improved the most at his role since this team is formed, because when he started playing offlane, KYXY was not impressive at all, but he's really grown into the role over the past month or so. Yeah, I mean, it's very crucial. I was discussing the other day, so whenever you have a new team member or you know that a position yeah, might be weaker than the others, it's kind of good that it's a three position because the rest of the team can make the plays while the three just holds his lane, gets some EXP. You don't expect that much from him. I mean, people in pub say, well, support. if you don't know how to play, just play support and it'll be fine. But in pro games, if you are a supporter and you're not doing good, you're probably making your team lose because your carry is not getting any farm, your mid is getting ganked, uh, but I mean, yeah, I, I agree with you. 
when he was starting to play the three position, he was like the weakest link of the team. But these couple weeks I've been watching him, it's been really impressive. And uh, it's been quite a while since I saw an Enigma going off lane without going to the jungle. But with the Chen in the team, I mean, he's pretty much forced to, unless they want to go out for both jungles and Enigma farming one and Chen the other. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, their five man is really scary now in the mid game, but. Oh, oh Kanka! So, Kanka! So, who is. I guess it's a Mushi Kanka. Ohio going Mushi mid is the little Shrek. KOXY yeah. on the Enigma off lane, and then uh, Extinct on his signature Chen. And by the way, Extinct must be hacking because every game he gets a Wildkin immediately. Like, <laughs> within the first two big camps, it's always Wildkin. And then he hits level six. Level seven at like the six seven minute mark. Ten yeah. Stack the remaining. stack the big camp, tornado the big camp, rinse and repeat. Suddenly level Five seven Chen remaining. with a mech Out if he wants it at like eight yeah. nine minutes in the game. I, I was going to say maybe I mean you can even put Kanka mid. Assuming Pak is going mid, uh, that matchup is pretty favorable to Kanka actually. I mean as long as you uh, as cancel your animation to um, can you call it, to bait the face shift. Uh, I've seen actually I've seen Sing Sing playing this matchup four or five times between yesterday and the day before. Yeah, and I have to say Kanka wins that lane pretty easily. And I, I guess the other thing is Puck can't Puck is not good at harassing, which is generally Kanka's weakness. Is he's a melee hero? He doesn't have much lane control until he levels up his uh, until he gets his cleave leveled up quite a bit. Then he can really drive you out of the lane, but. Uh, that's where here like Queen of Pain could crush him, but Puck doesn't have that same harassing ability early on. So, at the same time though, uh, if the, as long as the Puck can survive, I think that's the main thing for Neolution. I don't feel this Puck has to win his lane particularly. Uh, as long as they get the levels up on the loot of the Puck and the Mag come mid game, they should be in decent shape. Well, the question is, can they stop the push though? Because the push is coming. It's actually an Ohio Kunkka, so that puts Mushi on the Lashrak. Interesting. Interesting. So it is going to be the Kunkka going mid. So we're, I mean, are we going to see that matchup though? More, perhaps more likely, it'll be the Puck in the off lane in the Mag mid. Mag mid could be as well, yeah. Um, and the Earthshaker to finalize this. Uh, it's really interesting with a Shadow Demon and Earthshaker. You can pretty much secure those Fisher blocks, and certainly that lane has enough damage to kill if they want to go. Now the question is, will they go aggressive? And they may as well come because there's a Chen in the team, which means that they will not be facing a tri lane, but rather a dual lane with jungle support. Um, I don't know, uh, you probably watch more South East Asian Dota than I do right these days. Are they favoring the aggressive tri lane? Or they just... It, it really depends on the team and the situation. I, I, I would say the Filipino teams like it the most, but it, like some teams like TNC will just never do it. Uh, for Orange, they're probably... I, I won't be... Normally they just abandon the off lane, but it looks like KOXY is at least going to Look to deny a creep before heading to the jungle. He's got only two sets of clarities, and he has Tango, so I guess he's thinking of laning, but I don't know that he's going to get much out of this lane. Maybe they're anticipating the aggressive tri lane, but it doesn't look wait, like they're going to get it. They changed the heroes. Ned is now on the Lushrak, so it's not a farm Lushrak. Ohio oh, seems to be going solo mill Rubik. Second, second team this game to do, or this today to do the switcheroo with the heroes. Uh, it's it's becoming more and more common as sort of like a cheesy tactic, you know, just, yeah. to, just to make your opponents confused about who's going to do what. And I mean, that's the one thing with Orange is they have players who can really uh, they 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 pick heroes and they also have players who are very versatile. So Rubik obviously can be a support, can be a mid. We haven't seen solo mid Rubik in a while. I saw one position Rubik earlier today, Bruno. By the way, he was farming really? the safe lane, and I mean it was Mineski against an inferior opponent. And they crushed them. It was wow. quite fun, but the mid Rubik, something that felt like a bygone relic, but making a comeback here. It's making a comeback indeed, and uh, we just saw Magnus clearing up the easy camp, uh, the trees right there for the pools, so someone is going to be making those pools, probably will be maybe Earthshaker, playing a bit more passive next to the mid lane, getting those stacks and pulls first, and then transitioning into the tri lane, and for all we know, it's pretty obvious that now both teams will be going defensive with their carries but Mushi going uh, actually quite an interesting build for Kanka uh, going ring of protection first and well lots of region and oh, he's gonna get that rain of Basilius because I mean like you said they have Lashrak they've Chen they can push really hard and yeah I mean aren't just yeah. like every game I've watched Mushi he played Juggernaut he played a couple of other you know, sort of uncommon carries and he's always going early rain of protection because Orange as of late is 
I don't want to say quite cheesy, but they're very heavily focused on getting towers. Like, there's been games where they win where they get the towers by, like, the all the outer towers by, like, the 10, 15 minute mark. And even when they don't, they're trying to. They're It's such a change because the orange from TI2, uh, the orange from after that was all about split pushing, farming, with Mushi and Yamate getting fat on their respective carries. This is a totally new style for them. Yeah, but I mean, it's been working out so far. I, I don't think they've lost any tournament they've participated in. There, there hasn't been much competition, though. Like, I don't feel as strong as Orange's lineup is on paper. I've been impressed by them. Zenith is in disarray. Myth Trust has been inconsistent. Uh, Flash Esports is basically non-existent, although they were competitive for a little bit. And beyond that, I mean, who else is there? MUFC, who, you know, had some roster issues. They lost some of their players. They got poached by Orange. Uh, currently yep. don't really have an official roster. Uh, there's Winter's Team ABC, but they're still growing and, you know, trying to improve as a team. So I feel like Ar Orange still not nearly, you know, they haven't nearly seen, like, the kind of challenges they're going to have. I mean, even, I would say, like, there's not even another team in Southeast Asia that compares to the top European teams uh, what, right European? now. Yeah, like you think that Southeast Asia is not playing, I mean, Orange is not playing at a European level. No, no, no. I think that their competition is n nobody in Southeast Asia besides Orange can really oh. can really play against most of the top European teams. I could be wrong, but I mean, I just have not been impressed, to be honest. Like, the games are enjoyable to cast, don't get me wrong, but uh, the scene is a mess right now. And I mean, there's a lot of factors behind that. There's less tournaments, their, their computers aren't as good at running the game, uh, the sponsorship isn't at the same level, and I, European sponsors are not great by any means, but in Southeast Asia... I mean, you're lucky to, to even get any kind of hardware support in a lot of cases. So between that and all the roster changes and you know, a lot of these teams just adopting the game, it's mainly the roster changes, I guess. But Southeast Asia still has a long way to go uh, if they really want to be competitive beyond Orange at, at TI3. Well, yeah. I mean, but it's very likely, you know, that we'll see two or maybe even three teams from Southeast Asia invited to the International 3 because that has always been the case. And I think at this point, if TI3 was now, um, I would say Orange, of course, has a slot. And maybe Zenith, and what else is there, really? Uh, Winter Steam is doing pretty decent, but they're just very new to the scene. I don't know, I mean, uh, hopefully they'll get to play more tournaments with the Chinese as well. Yeah, I mean, that's what remake. I'm really looking forward to with the GST Challenge, is... You know, it's also, it's good practice for a lot of the Southeast Asian teams because the Chinese teams are rather insular. Like, they, their practice schedule, they all, you know, through Ace, they all sort of organize, like, they arrange their daily schedule so they can all practice together. So there's not really an opportunity for a team like Orange uh, or any Southeast Asian team to really play against them on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. I mean, once, I once in a while they'll scrim against them. I know LGD did a little bit, but it's fairly uncommon. Yeah. But, I mean, we'll see. Uh, the interesting thing about in Dota 1, those different scenes meant that Dota was played different in each part of the world. And that's what made it interesting because you saw a European team which was really good against other European teams facing a Chinese team with completely different strats, completely different play styles. Then you went to Pinoy and the bottle crowing everywhere. Uh, it's, I mean, it was always really interesting to see that different places had a different understanding of the game. And I think right now in Dota 2, that's not much the case. Uh, because it's kind of easier to play against each other, even if you have ping problems or whatever. Uh, I'm a bit concerned that because now everyone can play with each other, the styles are much more similar. Even if, you know, uh, there are some differences, like Wisp pretty much not being played in Chinese Dota because it's a weak laner and being very, very favored in the European Dota. Um, we're getting into a point where everything looks pretty similar and uh, I'm just wishing that there will be a team maybe Southeast Asia will be the place where that team happens because uh, because of all the things you said that just comes with innovative strategies something different like you know like Dignitas did with Warlock Warlock was a pick no one would ever pick and now everyone's saying wow look at that Warlock is ac actually really tanky and he can dish out the harass in the mid lane uh, so it's a decent pick who knows? Maybe Bloodseeker will be the new Warlock next month. <laughs> I, I, I was reading chat for a second while you were talking. I tuned back in to 
maybe maybe one seeker will be the next warlock next month and uh i don't know about that but yeah the rest of it oh sh oh crap i didn't do ap oranges oh well ban. i think just remake again yeah whoops my bad sorry guys i am uh i haven't been hosting too many lobbies lately but the game should be starting fairly soon so so yeah i mean I I, I also it also should be mentioned that we're very far off from TI3 and a lot can change between now and then. And I do think teams are gonna start sticking together and solidifying and practicing more seriously as we get closer. I mean in every scene. So uh, that was just my commentary on the scene as it is right now, not how it will be in a few months. You're saying that we're far away from TI3, but we are closer to TI3 than we are to TI2 right now. That's true. That is true. That's so scary. It's scary. I mean, I think the qualifiers last year were in May, weren't they? You can't say them. You uh, have to remember. Yeah, end of May, beginning of June. Yeah. And the first invites went out like end of March, beginning of April. I think that's when DK and Navi got their invites. Mm-hmm. So we're not too far. And from what I hear, this international might be a bit earlier. Yeah, like not begin. Too. Earlier in August, perhaps. I, yeah. That's, that's, so. the, that's the rumor going around the block right now, but obviously nothing announced or confirmed. Mm -hmm. But Ice Frog said it himself here on stream, so there you go. Oh, no. So, well, coming back to the picks, now there's no time for trying to make other people believe you're not picking your hero because now everybody knows that who's playing what. Yeah, no, uh, no shenanigans. No shenanigans, no shenanigans this time. We'll see a KYXY Enigma going offlane. That's that's uh, the thing that interests me now because I mean Enigma, a hero that can use the jungle so well. He's one of the. Is he the fastest jungler? Can we say maybe Bad Rider is faster? Yeah, but well, well, the thing is that Enigma can do it a little bit more safely. Like a Bat Rider is running around the jungle on quite low HP, whereas you know Enigma generally is not. But yeah, a Bat Rider is a little bit faster, but also very reliant on getting stacks and not being pressured at all in the jungle, mm -hmm. I feel. So, yeah, he's up there. Um, and the thing with Orange is this probably will just be in the jungle. It, it, technically, it's their offlane, but I will. although he goes for the tangos, I will be very surprised if he actually stays in the lane once he sees there's going to be multiple heroes here. Anyway, Bruno, we've had an AP remake. Let's introduce the teams properly. On the Neolution Indonesia side, we have Black Diamond on the Earthshaker, CL on the Luna, R... Nine on the Shadow Demon. XLR8 on the Puck. We expect him to go solo mid. Mag deforesting. Killing the trees. Killing the environment. Looks to be heading to the off lane potentially, but to start, he's going to do the mid pulls. And that is Quan G playing the mag. Yep. And on the other side, for Orange, we have Mushi, the M God, playing Kanka. Uh, Extinct going with the Jungle Chen. Leshrak being played by Net, Ohio playing the Rubik probably solo mid, and KYXY on the offlane Enigma, which as you say might transition into Shango really soon. Uh, Orange is trying to go for first blood, but they don't find anyone there, so they're just heading back. It's kind of weird. I think that they were expecting maybe an offensive tri lane because they were going four in their safe lane, and no offlane hero would go to ward without any kind of help, so... We have another disconnection. Let's hope it's not another remake. <laughs> KYXY getting annoyed at his own team here in all chat. That's that's when you know the disconnects are really stacking up. <laughs> yeah, so, we... so this is a best out of three, by the way, for anybody who's just tuning in. So we finally made our way to the semifinal. I say finally. We've gotten from the round of 16 to the semifinals in one day. It's uh, a rather compressed format, to say the least. Uh, are the finals tomorrow? The finals are indeed tomorrow. I believe they're best of five. Wow. So this is it for whoever, for the winner of this match. They have the day off, can study their opponents, come back tomorrow, and we'll play the grand finals. I can actually, since we have a pause here, I'll double check the time on that, just so anybody who's curious can find out. It is going to be at 19 SGT, which is 12 CET, or 6 AM EST, or if you're like me, 3 AM PST. Haha. <laughs> I'm good at time zones, man. Time zones. I'm an expert. Why Why is the world so hard? Why can't all we be on the same time? On the same, also the same, like, 
uh, I don't know. It's winter here. It's summer in Argentina. I don't know. The world's, world's crazy. The world's a crazy, scary place, man. Yeah. So, R9, roll me around some observer wards. And whenever you're up against orange, you have to be worried about those smoke ganks. I mean, some teams will sit back and farm their channel a lot. Uh, it really varies from team to team what style they prefer, but orange, they can do it all. Extinct can get that really fast level six. He can go smoke ganking. And we've seen him do both, so he's a little bit unpredictable with his Chen style and with the early smoke up on his hero. They haven't seen this yet, but if they ever do, they gotta be a little bit suspicious. Yeah, and KYXY denied one creep wave, he just went back to the fountain to regenerate. It's kind of questionable to do that because you miss pretty much one wave out of experience, but if he can last hit with those Eidolons, which he seems not to be doing, maybe he's stacking? No. Oh, he's just harassing Diamond a little bit. Well, Mag's doing the mid pulls while the Enigma, a nice job there. You want to make sure they hit you right when you get to this point, as they won't chase you any farther, especially as the range creeps. So, it looks like... I mean, I'm not sure this is the best trade, because they can do tons of pulls. They ha Orange did not foray into the enemy camp, so sure, you can deny the Luna a little bit of experience, but you have to be worried about getting killed, and you could be just free farming your jungle, which is exactly what Mag is doing right now. Although, it looks like he's slightly messed up his double pull there, so not going to be yeah. very efficient. That didn't work. I mean, it's a good strat if you can pull it. That's how Bad Rider can also get levels really fast. Yeah, uh, you kill the course, small camp, you sack the big camp, and then eventually you kill the big camp. Yeah, I mean, with Magnus, I think you can climb into the cliff and empower if you want to do that, but it's not really efficient. Oh, you mean... Uh... You stack the big camp, then you jump into the cliff, and you are in range for attacking them somehow. Here? I've seen it, yeah, I've seen it done once. I guess you have to shockwave them to aggro them onto you? Yeah, yeah, you have to. Okay. And then when they get next to you, you just start hitting the first one, and because of the empower, it cleaves towards the other ones. It's really, really slow, but it's doable. Yeah, I mean, there's also this weird strategy which I saw Ice 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 try to do, I think. I think it was Ice Ice Ice. Where you go to the Ancients, and then you basically, you get, you, you eat the trees here with a Quelling Blade on the Radiant side, and then yeah. you lure one of the Ancients in right as the trees are about to respawn, and then it traps that one Ancient inside with you, and you've leveled up in power as much as possible. You're farming like the small camp while this is going on. And then you slowly cleave the entire Ancient stack down while you're protected by the trees that regrew. Uh, oh, me... Oh, wow, XLR8 yeah. almost dies. Double damage on Rubik and Ohio. I, this is a tough lane for Puck, because Fade Bolt, not something you could disjoint you just cast the Fade Bolt directly on the puck, so the last hitting is going to be hard. Uh, even pushing out is quite difficult, and a lane that Rubik should have the edge in, for sure. Yep, and Kanka is enjoying that free farm, pretty much. I don't think he's missed a creep. Yeah. No, he's missed two. Mushi, I mean, he's you're a disgrace. Okay. Yeah, come on, Mushi. Get your act together, man. Leveling up X marks the spot. He's already got two points at it. Interesting uh, well, choice. I mean, it's, uh, it's an easy torrent. It is. Got that. They do have a five-man lineup, but the cleave is also great at just forcing the enemy off the tower. So. No, 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 but it makes sense because you don't want the cleave if you're, say, fa solo farming because you'll push the lane. Yeah, but you could also it sit on the skill points rather than leveling up X now. So he's obviously got a plan in mind of just going for a lot of kills when they push. Mm, probably. I'm interested to see what he has in mind. But... Because, I mean, That's the, cleave, the for... cleave is a great way to zone your opponents off a tower when you do go to push. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of crazy not to go for max cleave at level 7, just because of the insane damage and the cooldown. But, I don't know, I mean, yeah, it's just, as you say, you probably should hold on to the points and it should be easier. He's level 5 now, let's see what he does. If he levels up Torrent, I'll be really, really puzzled. Well... But it seems he's holding for the point. Yeah, he's holding the point. I mean, two points and it no. does make for a guaranteed torrent if you just X and then immediately drop the torrent. You don't even have to recall them. It'll just naturally, they'll naturally be pulled back right as the torrent goes off. So, getting two points in it and even leaving it there is quite standard, but just skilling it this early, well, a little bit unusual, but he will go back for the cleave now. XLR8 getting his items up. Ohio, uh, looks like he's winning the mid lane by quite a bit. Five CS ahead, seven denies to zero ahead. That is a big lead. And when he hits level 6, if he's still in the orb, he can look to go for a kill here on the puck. Yep, and you were speaking about Extinct. Now he has a Wildling, so... 
He's stacking those camps. He's going to make some money out of it. Also, you'll notice when he's jungling, he stacks one camp with the Wildkin. He stacks another with his hero. We're going to see it again here. Yep. And he does this very consistently. I don't think I've seen him mess it up once, which is... I, I mean, you'd be surprised. Well, you wouldn't be surprised, but some of the viewers might be. A lot of pro players, it, they struggle to do this every single time. Uh, so oh, look at that. Something, Perfect. Something Extinct is quite good at. He, He's really good in it. <laughs> this is, I think this is more of his style. I mean, he does go for the smoke, but more often than not, he's just stacking and farming, and he's going to hit pretty much level 6 off of this. Uh, not only that, I mean, he's so... If he wants to go for a mech, after these two camps, he'll probably have 600 gold to go. Maybe even a little bit less. And that's really good and you because... Com you compare that to the mech, the mech's level 2. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and actually, Enigma's still in the bottom lane. I, I don't really like him being here, to be honest. I feel like they could just get so much more out of him being in the jungle, and it's okay to give the Luna some far, but I guess the Luna's level 4, largely because the Shadow Demon's parked in the lane, not really doing anything to zone the Enigma out, and also leeching a lot of experience. Yeah, now Enigma's going to check the bottom rune, see if he li he's, he's lucky and he gets something interesting. He could... I don't know, maybe a region and he goes for the jungle now? Because he has no more clarities. It's a DD. There's nothing you can do with a DD as an Enigma. Go, go, farm the, go farm the Ancients KYXY. I don't think it works that way. <laughs> He's not going to farm the Ancients. Observer, yeah. Observer Ward plays top in the lane. and uh, This is a very easy kill on the mag. If he ever gets caught by X, Tort, Split Earth follows, and if he doesn't die, he's certainly going back to Fountain. I really like the fact because because they have a Leshrac and a Chen, they could easily get that tier 1 tower two minutes into the game, but they're choosing not to. And I think it's really good because if they do go for that tier 1 lane uh, tower, and they don't get the tier 2, then the Magnus now suddenly gets reform. So sometimes pushing is not the better strategy. It's it's a mistake you see a lot of the newer teams make, because they feel a little bit desperate. Oh, they're going to go on Mag now. Oh. Here's the X to start, the Tord to follow. Whoa. <laughs> Skewers away while being thrown up in the air. Down will go. That was a silly little game. I mean, yeah. but yeah, this is the beauty of going later on. Is now Chen's level six. He's got two creeps. They can probably get the tower. They have a decent wave. It's not amazing. And now Mushi's maxing Tidebringer. So between this and between Net having one point edict, the tier one's dead for sure. The tier two will follow. And the mag can't do anything to stop this at level three. He can slow it down, but he can't stop it by himself. Not really. And, uh, it, oh, I didn't know the uh, Helver Smasher has the sound now when he claps. Like the the Orsa, the Chen Grip. Oh, dude, Roshan has the most ridiculous sound. They're going to go again with the X. He's already skewered now. It's Throw dead. up in the air. So, so dead. I mean, so this, is, this is, this uh, is, it is a nice lineup to just punish that. You know, that offlane, this is why you don't really see Mag in the offlane either, but even Puck will be in trouble. Fissure there as well, KYXY bottom lane, the TP's come in, Rubik is level 7 because it is a solo mid Rubik. Stolen Fissure, Fissure blocks himself in a little bit longer. Wow. That was, that must have been a misclick or something, or just a rage Fissure. Ohio frustrated that his TP was timing, he's got his arcane boots up now. Fissure again. <laughs> this game. This game. Some silly shenanigans. Another Fisher. <laughs> oh, now I've really seen it all. I've seen it all. Top lane, the push continues. And look at Mag's position. I mean, it, even here, it's a little bit dangerous. The support will come, but... I mean, they've already forced the TP. They've done a lot of damage to the tower. And even so, can they actually stop this? The mech... No, he went for our boots oh. first. Yeah, here we go. Mushi caught under the tower. Throws the torrent. Will it land? The boat as well. Yes, it will. Will look to escape here. Oh, it was actually set back to base by Chen. No, I was wondering yeah, where he Chen. went. <laughs> Net now in the trees. Net trying to run. Net has a TP. Can they actually stop him? There's no points in Enchant Totem. He should be okay. In fact, XLR8 may be, may be the one who uh, dies. Nice juke. Orbs into the trees. Now the Fissure from the Earthshaker. Once again, XLR8 runs back into Mushi. Mushi is back to the fight. He's TP'd in for this. His Shadow Blade is coming soon. Onto the Earthshaker they go. Fissure lands. Downhill fall. 3-1 the score. And that was after the Puck rotated in. Normally when you rotate the Puck in like that, you expect to get a bunch of kills for free. Nice little phase shift there, but... Things looking pretty good for Orange here as the laning stage starts to end. Oh, they're going on Luna. Uh, oh, the sun that Luna is so dead. Nova. Nova. Yeah, with the loose... Rubik's burst is absolutely insane with that... And Lissona has a drum. She's not even... And a wand. She's not even that squishy, but... Rubik 
plus Lashrak with Lucent Beam stolen. There's just no escape. Mid lane, they're gonna go again on R9. All of a sudden, the armor descends. Orange is just, oh, what a uh, disruption. disruption. Dodges the boat, will escape, but even so, the pressure is mounting. And Shadow Blade is coming soon on this Radiant on this Kunkka. That's gonna be trouble. Also, the Magnus level three. That's that's really unfortunate. They really know that if they don't get the level six in the Magnus, they have no chance to actually team fight. Because yeah, the pack ultimate is kind of nice. Luna's ultimate is also helpful if people are staying there, but without that RP, you don't have a proper initiation to make things happen. So now the Enigma staying bottom lane makes more sense as we see the, the sort of the larger game plan, which was the wait until the Rubik can rotate down to the bottom lane, and now Enigma can go into the jungle. They protect the tier one bottom. Although Neon didn't try to. Oh, Chen gets eclipsed! Will Land of God, not gonna Ouch. matter. But now the creeps with the surround have the net as well. No, the net on cooldown actually. Stolen. Was it just a Lucent Beam, but it might be enough nonetheless. Turn around from Luna. Lucent to start. The Cream Code to follow. Serious hate on Ohio. He will pay with his life. Yeah, I think Ohio just. And he's probably goal, saying yeah. team? Team? As team. KYXY farms the neutrals. Oh, KYXY. Okay, he survived. There's no Fisher. Yeah, there's a Fisher now. There's Fisher, but there's no there's no Dream Coil. Disruption's oh, here. He's turning Mushi. around. Echo on the creeps kills off Mushi. Wow, all the neutrals came to the party to assist in the kill. Oh, and they can't deny the tower. Oh, Enigma. The Shadow Demon is at level six. And he can go. Jukes away. The Orb doesn't hit. If the Orb hits, he's probably dead there. Instead, Malphus can turn this around. The backstab. Coming in, looks like from the chat. No, Extinct is ganking the tower or the hero bottom lane. Let's see who it's gonna be. Oh, he's gonna gank the courier, perhaps? No, just gonna no, keep no, on moving. No, no, he has a seed. I think he has a seed. Everybody's just constantly Why running or dying this game. It's now he sees the courier and says, hmm, I might as well wait. Delicious, delicious, spirited Grievel. Nope, go for the loot instead. Looks like that's the plan. Where's the net? Not in- oh, he already used it, it looks like. Okay, I think he clicked on a creep by accident there. The torrent will follow. Down will go. God rest your soul. I think That's so nice, because with those creeps and Kanka being there, you have so much room for error. Even if he missed the net, there was the torrent immediately. Meanwhile, uh, Quan G, black hole top lane. Yeah, I mean, like you said, there's just so many ways that it doesn't really even matter if they miss one or two spells. And also, Luna Eclipse on cooldown, and there's no RP, so... I mean, she's still not level 6, Jesus. There's just... No. The, Neo is so reliant on that Eclipse to do anything, and... Chen is really one of the best counters in the game to Luna, because he has so many creeps to tank the neutrals, and even if you take damage, you just heal them back to full health, and... Speaking of that, Chen, RK boots up, and... Look what else, Mech is coming soon. Is he the richest Mech on his team? Stone. No, but he's quite rich no. anyway. No, but he's, he has lots of money, and it's just 150 away from the neck, I think, or 250. So, yeah, I mean, after that, there's no reason why they can't just go as five, push towers, and there's nothing they can do to defend. Magnus is level six, finally. He caught up with levels, so now he has an RP, but they're losing their bottom tower right now. Ohio is rather poor, Those that death really set him back. The CS is not that great, all things considered. It's such a powerful start mid, but it's good enough, it seems. And Arch could even go Roche now. They've got the tier 2 down bottom. Let's see what they go for. TP back towards mid. Doesn't tell us yet what they're going to do. One thing that Arch is normally good about is dropping the wards when they get this tier 2, but they actually don't place any down. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Maybe they're, oh, um, maybe they're waiting for the Enigma uh, Blink Dagger. Because he's 200 away from it. So if he wants it, he can have it really soon. Yeah, and, he's oh, gonna have it. Oh, Bushy, you're kind of there. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I saw him running down mid, but I'm like, oh, he's just gonna back off. Nope, Bushy <laughs> is not gonna back off. Net in trouble, gets purged. Can they send him back in time? No chance. Nope, Hand of God will be a chance. Dream Coil and the Orb come in. Now the Fissure, RP as well. Echo, which was stolen by the Rubik, does basically nothing from Ohio. Three heroes dead. They're on the way out. There's no black hole. Okay, wait, XY wants his blink. It doesn't have it yet. Orange kind of self destructed this team fight. They do get the single counter kill on the support Shadow Demon. And the mag will get away. I mean, just the Mushi really put his team in a bad position there, giving up that kill. Doing their job trying to bail him out as a carry, but that was a case where just had to let him go. Yeah. Uh, I think Mushi is playing really greedy this game. He's died a couple times just because he was a bit. 
farther away where he should be. And uh, I mean, yeah, he's strong. He has his Shadow Blade now, and his Face Boots, and he's going for a VKP. But until then, I mean, Pack can just do so much damage. Earthshaker was there as well. Luna won't hesitate to use Eclipse on him just to kill him. So it's kind of tough. You have to stick with your teammates for now. The Luna is still a bit under leveled. She's getting closer and closer to the level two Eclipse, but. I mean, at this point in the game, you'd probably be level 10 or so with the 4 2 and 1 record, but the Enigma denies and also just a lot of pressure in her lane throughout the game. Hasn't farmed, only seen on ADCS. Mushi had over 100 at this point. So, yep. overall, I, they've done a decent job of shutting down the Luna. They're ahead by a lot, but it doesn't feel like Orange is a commandy lead. They're going for a BKB now in Enigma. And as we look at the sign up, there's one way to deal with that that's the RP, and that's a very hard way to try and counter. Black hole because running near to black hole and enigma, black hole and enigma, you're probably caught before you can even use the RP. So yeah, unless you go from the behind, which you have some range, but it's it's really hard anyways. So so he'll be fairly invulnerable. This may be their most important pushing item. Oh, they're going on Mushi. Any up? Maybe not. Any up? Are no. they going to commit? In comes the orb from the uh, from Ohio. Orbs into the middle of the chain creeps, then gets turned around upon. Vidra catches oh, two, Fisher. looking for the echo, actually doesn't nice, have it Fisher. for 15 seconds, here's a boat, here's a skewer, there is an RP, but he's not casting yet, he doesn't want to blow it, they get one, Orange is, uh, I don't know if they're going to be able to take this fight, Black Hole's here, but RP Black from Hole. the backside, going to no, cancel it, RP. oh, what an RP, you, just as you predicted, the backstab RP, triple, no. but in the end, the cleanup crew may be here in the form of net on that support, Lashrak, double for him. The creeps giving chase. What's the triple? Give me the gold, and Net will get it. Oi, 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 oi. Triple for Net. He's going to be one fat Lashrak. I mean, that was a great fight for Neolution as well. It really was. The black hole canceled quickly. Three heroes caught in the RP. Shockwave on all of them. And they got that initial pick as well uh, to start the fight off. I forget who it was at this point, but... I mean, and Mushi wasn't even doing that much. <laughs> In the end, just yeah. the raw, the raw item advantage and level advantage really helping. They got a higher there. really quick with that, um, with the Fisher. He was trapped in there. Pack jumped in, and then as he said, well, the black hole was cancelled really fast with the RP. Uh, but yeah, I, I was expecting Neo Lucian to win that fight easily, but suddenly all the damage from Le Shrak and the Kanka with the splash because you know he is really hard right now. Uh, Maybe Neolution needs to tank up a little bit. I mean, their supports and their Luna, because she has a thousand HP. But he decides to go for the Mithril Hammer instead of the Ogre Club first. So while well, that gives her a little bit more damage, oh, mid lane. Lincoln, there's the orb. Balfist under tower, ports forward. Eclipse is here. Good damage. Is it enough? Ohio still alive. Steals the Eclipse, turns it around, drops it and delivers, but will fall in the end. Net earning up wall under the tree. Echoed so he can't run. Now the Enchant Totem needs the Fissure, missed the Fissure, will probably die. It's a centaur party, and that is not a party that you actually want to attend if you can ever possibly avoid it. A big overextension there in the end. And they also, if they had level 2 Eclipse, I think they crushed that fight, but with only the level 1 Eclipse, just not enough damage. Yeah, exactly. It's just, what, 4 beams? The first time? Yeah, it's four beams. So so now I'm really eating my words when I'm saying, why is this Enigma still bottom? He could be in the jungle. Because if he was bo if he wasn't bottom, that Luna is definitely 11 by now. Yep. So good job stopping the Luna. I think the only guy that's not happy right now from Orange is Ohio, because he's dying every single team fight. But as long as his team is doing okay, he won't mind. Yeah. I mean, the lower move speed, uh, they have so many good ways to like kind of just catch the Rubik though. Dream Coil, uh, obviously great, and Lucent Beam is actually quite good just to set up the, the follow-up initiation. People think of it just as a nuke in a lot of cases, but it really is a, a setup stun in a sense. The mini stun is long enough to get in range for Fissure, to get a good block, and the Blink Dagger is coming soon on Mag, so they're going to have double Blink on their initiators. And you gotta feel like Orange has not convincingly secured an advantage where they can just sit back and relax. Mushi is getting really fat. He does have the Aegis, but there's so much. I mean, there's great, there's great sort of team fight. There's demonic purge to deal with him later on in the game. So Orange can't be sitting back and feeling too comfortable just yet. Yeah, exactly. And uh, eventually, like in ten minutes from now, probably Earthshaker will also have his Blink Dagger. And. It will be really hard to initiate against that team because you can initiate into four of them, but as long as one of those stay behind, either the Pug, the Magnus, or the Earthshaker, 
They can do so much with just blink a hit. I want to point out extinct. Yeah, <laughs> the triple blink is gonna be ridiculous. I want to point out point out that extinct uh, has had a gem for a while now. The map control is favoring Arc by quite a bit, which is limiting the illusion's ability to actually farm. So even though they're doing decently in the fights, experiencing gold wise, they are somewhat being starved. Luna getting close to the BKB, and once that comes out, you know, on the flip side, there's well, there's a stolen RP potentially, but mainly just a black hole to deal with that. And that's also something that we haven't seen is any really big spell steals from Ohio. Not only is he dying, but he's not stealing the big spells in these fights. We saw Fisher. Whoa, 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 whoa. He stole the RP. Um, he stole the Echo Slam, which didn't really work. Yeah. <laughs> he stole it. Uh, he stole the Eclipse. It was a big well. steal, that's true. It wasn't a big usage. Uh oh. There's uh -oh. the initiation on Black Diamond, but he will be disrupted, so the turret misses him. Now comes in, and Mushi just manning up on him. Has the BKB, There's, they don't want to blow anything just for this. The Black Hole just, oh, actually catches two with that. Didn't see the puck at first. Puck will drop, two heroes dead. The BKB is just murdering the illusion. And I mean, sure, Neolution has RP, but they don't have the damage to deal with those BKBs and the heals. And now Orange. It, it looked a little rocky, but going for high ground around 20 minutes. This seems to be the story of this Orange team, the new and revitalized version. Very, very push friendly. And uh, at this point, the Golden Experience is really very, very different from one team to another. So they're going to get this Barracks, maybe? Luna's trying to defend, but I mean. I don't feel she's safe, even there. Oh, she's, she does a BKB now. RP only uh, catches uh, that, and it's stolen, stolen by Ohio. Insult to injury here. And in comes the Enigma, just looking for a few nukes. They bring back the Luna. The Luna will fall. That was the RP used by the Rubik. Echo was thrown out. The Blink Dagger, no, that just walked in, waltzed in. Net with another triple to his name. The boat flies in, a celebration boat. Party for sure. And Orange, yeah, this, this, this Rex is very, very dead. Yeah. No RP, no Eclipse, no BKB. This may be two lanes of Rex. This, well, actually, they don't have, they still have the tier two mid, but I mean, not looking good right now for Nicholas. Not looking good at all. And great job on Ohio. We were questioning him. You were questioning him. I was saying that he was stealing the right spells. But he was really, really fast in stealing that RP. No, I wasn't questioning Ohio. He's one of my favorite players. I just said he had not been stealing the big spells, which. Echo Slam doesn't count when you're Echo Slamming nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, well, just, I think, back to farming. If that tier 2 tower was not there, they could have gone for two sets of Arax, but... Because if it's there, they just have to go back to farming. Roche is not up for another, what, nine minutes? Does Skunka still have the ages? Mm, yeah, he does. Yes, he does. And I, look, I think he's got his Crystalis arriving right now. Oh wait, no. No, oh. I, I selected the wrong hero. Yeah, he hasn't no, spent he his gold yet. No, he's buying Demon Edge. He goes Demon Edge first. Maybe he's going for Divine, I mean... Mushi, please. Please do it. Your fans demand it. He can easily go for Divine this game, because... Because he's got Aegis. <laughs> because he's got Aegis, and uh, he's looking really confident. I mean, well, I think that's the key. He's looking confident, so he's probably going for it. More than whether or not he should go for it. Exactly. Anyways, uh, maybe they, if they want uh, an Aegis, they have to delay the game a little bit because if they're pushing now and they get Raxis, then the game is pretty much over. Have you noticed that Mushi doesn't sit on a pile of 4,000 gold anymore? He actually spends it? Yeah, that, that's quite a big change. I mean, That's a hard habit to break. I mean, he was very determined. He gets fissured, but they really can't go on him. They have to initiate. I mean, who do you initiate on? It's just... So, Enigma's got a BKB, Mushi's got Aegis and BKB, Rubik's got a 4 staff. They're gonna try and go on Mushi, oh, but I don't think this pack. is the right choice. <laughs> that pug was so unhappy, he just blinked into a Leshrak stun. <laughs> that happened to me. <laughs> that happened to me playing with Winter the other day. I was playing Queen of Pain, I blinked right in as Leshrak, just stunning the creeps and just dying. <laughs> That was so, so sad. Uh, yeah, you, you, I was very sad, and that was only a pub game, so... top tower is under attack. Oh, well, I mean, yeah, they're, they're pushing, black holes up. Regeneration. They're smoking with three heroes, I don't know what they plan to do. Mushi is 3,000 gold away from his rapier, which we want to see. Rubik still has reverse polarity, and he'll have it for another minute or so. Yeah, he's... That's the beauty of this... 
farming Rubik as he actually gets level 11 quickly. Mag blinks uh, in uh, and, well, that was a big whiff. He may get black hold for his trouble. Nope, not gonna go. Not worth it, really. Yeah, it would have been a good place to black hole, but Orange do smell the blood in the water. Luna just desperately pushing mid. Here comes the puck, blinks uh, in. Again. Aegis is gone. Aegis expired during this time. Now the boat flies out. Black hole looking for it as KYX went. Not throwing it just yet. He's got to do it soon, but he can't find the opening. He's going to look to drop it, but he can get RP'd if he does so. And in the end, just not going to throw it. Eclipsed up. Will melt most likely. He dies. <laughs> Double, I think that was a double four step. It was. Doesn't matter. They're just bouncing him around like a ping pong ball. In the end, that ping pong ball gets smushed and thrown in the trash can. And now Mushi comes in. Out for blood. Out for freaking blood. And Luna did as well. He wants this divine. <laughs> Mag flicks in. Wants to RP. Dies mid cast animation. Oi, oi, oi. This game is silly. Oh, Net turned well, off his Pulse Nova, survived. should have had the kill there. No Shaker survives, the Rats will not survive. This is pretty much GG. Mushi is still too far away from his rapier. Who knew oranges could be so unpleasant? I mean, just so angry and violent. I don't know. Like, well, they are a bit sour. Yeah, but this is, this is like an orange that has, like, teeth. Like, sharp, nasty teeth. Oh, he went for the chrysalis. Mushi, Mushi why you no have fun? Come on, Mushi. <laughs> What's Luna going to do with the rapier if you die? It's not like they can win the game or anything. But pretty much can. Yeah, so at this point, I mean, there's pretty much no way for Neolution to come back. All the lanes are getting pushed in. They, there's really, and that, I think that is, that's sort of the beauty of Orange's strategy this game is once they get ahead, if they get their core items up and the Luna's not really fat, there's just nobody you can go on. If you go on anyone except Chen, Chen just heals them, sends them back to base if needed. And, you know, if you go on the heroes with the BKBs, well, they're probably not dying anyway. So there's just nobody you can initiate on. And that makes it really oh, hard to Oh, Shadow Demon is so dead now. Shadow Demon is so dead. Yeah, SD, so dead. Wow, I'm impressed. I didn't know Midnight Pulse has such a range. Well, Did you know that? It's it, like 600. If only, it, if it, only it didn't have a cast animation, then it would actually be a good spell. Yeah. But it's 600. Uh, it's quite big. Did you see the PGG proof black hole video? Yeah, <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> That video. If you guys haven't yeah. seen it, I think Toby tweeted about it. It's uh, just look for like PGG proof black hole or something like that, or the long, longest like AOE black hole. It's basically sucks in everything on the map. You're on the map. Pretty much. That's what I need. Then I would enjoy Enigma. Yeah, I mean that's interesting because that's possible. Oh, look at Enigma going for the Luna. Echo. Echo was good, but the damage just not there. Now the black hole is. The boat splashes through, the crits are delivered, the death ensues. And they can really finish the game now, I think. Eclipse is on cooldown. Everything on cooldown, basically. RP, but, you know, what's an RP without damage? Exactly. And the GG call is here. Well, Bruno, I mean, what do you, what do you think overall of this game, having seen how it developed? Uh, I have to say it was a song, really. I mean, from the get-go, every single decision from Orange was spot on. From leaving the Enigma on the offlane, to getting the quick farm on the Kanka and the Chen, because that was important. Get the early start on Ohio, so that he, even if he didn't have the best of mid-games, he pulled ahead enough to make interesting stuff happen. And he stole the proper uh, spells as well. So, yeah, not much to say here, it's just... A stomp from Orange. Let's hope the second game is more even. I, I, yeah, I, I mean, I think the main thing for Neolution is Orange had such a greedy draft. Enigma and Chen, and there was just nothing that Neolution did to punish it because the way they opened their draft, they couldn't go aggressive. I mean, like you mentioned, maybe they'll go aggressive tri lane, but really a Shadow Demon, Earthshaker, Luna tri lane, not that scary, not that strong. And I mean, even a pick like the Kunkka seemed unconventional, but. Uh, you know, it, it's a, it's. I think Koka does pretty well against that tri lane. Just the cleave damage against two relatively squishy heroes can be quite strong. And I mean, ultimately, I think for Orange, a lot of it is also their versatility. We saw them swapping the heroes around 
in the pregame. Well, I think it was Net who had the Rubik's initially picked, and then they swapped it to Ohio. So it's hard to draft against these guys and eat, know what how they're going to lane things, especially when they pick heroes like that who have pretty unpredictable lane. I mean, they picked Chen and Enigma, and you still weren't entirely sure who was going to play what in the end. That's just a exactly. testament to the team's versatility. So, guys, that wraps up for Game 1, but this is a best of three. I'm LD. He's Bruno. If you want to follow him, twitter.com slash statsmanbruno. Of course, now a traitorous member of the GD studio. I'm LD. Twitter.com slash LDDota. Stay tuned. Game 2 coming up next. I'm not going to let you get a word in, Bruno. Ha, 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 ha.